Hello my lovelies. I hope you've had a fabulous couple of weeks. I'm back today to share something a little bit special with you. Over the last few months, mostly May and June, I worked on a lovely commission renovating and resizing an Edwardian wedding dress for a very lovely bride-to-be and I thought it'd be nice to share that process with you. Before I get into that, I wanted to say a huge hello and thank you to the new subscribers. There are a few of you who have subscribed over the last few weeks and I'm very, very grateful that you have. The dress that I've been working on isn't strictly an Edwardian wedding dress and I think some people are going to maybe have a bit of a problem with taking an antique item of clothing and changing it so that it's not necessarily an accurate Edwardian or Victorian item of clothing. But I feel that unless something is a really rare treasure or, you know, it's like a really sort of special example of of something by a designer or so on, I I feel that if somebody has a very special occasion and they want to wear something and it needs to be repaired and also it needs to be resized and maybe altered slightly, I personally don't have a problem with that. And I feel that the story of that garment continues. I think that's a really joyous and wonderful thing. So the style of this dress isn't strictly a wedding dress. It would have been known as a morning dress or a wrapper dress like these that I shall show you. I got these images from my Pinterest. And they would have been worn by a woman in the morning as she was getting ready to face the day. She may have had a visitor or two, they would have been very intimate acquaintances and they would have joined her in her salon for some morning tea. Really I suppose we would call this a peignoir now, a dressing gown of some sort. I found this version, I think this is from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and I thought this was lovely and this lady was rather grand uh, and rather fabulous. The lingerie dress was a popular term used in the press at this time and it was seen as slightly derogatory as these dresses were seen as very racy. This one would have only really been worn in the home and is made of the finest cotton gauze. You cannot buy this fabric anymore and the most beautiful laces and embroidered trimmings and ribbon. It's mostly hand constructed it's just panels of lace and gauze all hand sewn hand finished the edges are hand finished and then sewn together the back is where I needed to make the most alterations and I will show you that process in this video it's just so beautiful this dress I feel a real sense of privilege being able to work on it because just looking at this fabric fills my heart with delight. And I know that the lovely bride is so excited to wear this dress. I wish I could find embroidered fabrics and lace as fine and beautiful as this. Over the years, I've become a little bit of a specialist in altering, repairing Edwardian wedding dresses. I've done quite a few and it always is such a, a pleasure to do a job like this. I'm always surprised that they've kept their pristine colour and although a few panels of this dress need to be replaced, it's basically in incredibly good condition. So here I've undone the hem panels and I'm having to insert and replace some panels that are pin tucked which I will do on the machine and I'm using another cotton gauze from a shawl that the bride had also collected because we just couldn't find a match in modern fabrics and I'm also using Spanish lace pins from Merchant and Mills because they're very fine and very very sharp 
and the weave of this fabric is is so fine that it needed lace pins so here's a practice panel of pin tucks I haven't done pin tucks for years and years so this was a, an interesting process this was my first attempt a little bit wibbly and um, I also practiced this sort of the hand finishing and pin tucks are so called because they should be the size of a pin mine are a tiny bit bigger but these pins are very very fine but you know not bad for a first go The panel on the left is one that I've removed from the dress and the one on the right is my practice panel. So it's not a bad attempt. I'm, I'm very nearly there. The pin tucks were the only part of this job that I, I did on my trusty sewing machine, Bertha. So here I am about to sew. I first of all sewed in the panel to the original dress and then I'm joining up the pin tucks from the original going across the new panel and then back into the original because they've got to match up. I did try it actually the other way with the pre-pin tucked panel and then sewed it in and it just um it I wasn't happy with it so I tried it this way and I think it worked really really well there was something very mesmerizing and and sort of meditative about doing these pin tucks on this dress this dressmaking manual from the late 30s early 40s is my go-to reference when it comes to all sorts of dressmaking and sewing techniques it's a mine of valuable or invaluable actually information so here i have hand neatened the top of the gauze and i'm now sewing it with really a, a sort of a slip stitch onto the lace back onto the lace all I did was I looked at how all the other lace had been inserted and as I was undoing the original panel which needed to be replaced, just sort of took a a picture in my mind, I suppose you could say, of how the dress had been stitched. I did look in books and online to see if there were particular instructions about fine hand sewing from the Edwardian era and I couldn't really find anything so... I just copied what I had originally seen in this extant garment. On a side note, I found these vintage Edwardian photographs of these lovely ladies who I am sure have magical powers. They are now my honorary great-great-aunts and both of them are inviting you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Both myself, Miss Madge Lessing and Miss Mabel Love would love it if you join us for our sewing adventures each week. I hope you enjoyed sharing some of this commission with me and I would be very interested to hear your thoughts about whether you think you should rework antique clothing for a modern wearer or whether you think that it's a little bit sacrilegious. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, my little cottage by the sea. You may notice there's something slightly different going on uh, and that's because I have invested treated myself, sold my soul to the devil, to buy a new camera so that I can up my filming because it's something I really love to do, making videos and sharing my sewing adventures with all of you. So 
hopefully lots of exciting things to come. Wherever you are in the world, whatever's going on with all the craziness, I hope that you are safe, well and happy. Until next time, my lovelies. Bye.